know my favorite part of a Sunday morning is when they have to whip out those extra chairs. It's my favorite part, favorite part. Please stand, let's worship the Lord this morning. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing hand? Is it all too much to care? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? The shame's done all its steel. And you're desperate for some deal. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way.
praise today. Amen. So today I'm going to be reading out of John 18. And what's happening here is Jesus has just been arrested. And after he gets arrested, he's being questioned by Pilate. And that's the conversation that's going on here. And then what happens in John 18, 38 through 40 is this. What is truth? Pilate asked. Then he went out again to the people and he told him, He's not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? Pilate's like, I do not want this innocent man's blood on my hands. Please take him back. And then the people shout back this. No, not this man. We want Barabbas back. And you see, Barabbas was a rebel and a murderer who was guilty of his crime. Like what his accusers said that he did, he did it. He was guilty. And then we have Jesus on the other hand, who was found innocent. And as we look through his life, all he ever did was love people and then make people mad because of his love. And every time in the past I've come across this scripture, I've realized that I've had some resentment towards Barabbas. Like, how could you let Barabbas go and then go and do that to my Jesus? Like, how could you do that? And I know that was the plan, but I just realized I've had some beef with Barabbas. But this past week, when, when I was reading this scripture, uh, I actually realized something for the first time fully. Like, maybe I've heard it before, but this time it hit me and I understood that I'm literally Barabbas. I am this guy Barabbas, this one that I resented because he was guilty and set free. That's me. I was guilty and set free. Jesus paid the price for me. And so in my quiet time with the Lord, I just kept thinking this over and over. Man, I am Barabbas. And I kind of played it out in my head. What would that look like that day if I was Barabbas? And I picture myself in this cell and all these sins going through my mind. And I'm like, everything they said, I did it. Like, I'm guilty. And then they take Jesus and I out, and they're like, we're going to release one of you. And then I lose all hope because I'm like, obviously, they're going to release Jesus, the innocent one. And then they start calling for me to be released, and the ropes are untied from my hands. And they say, you were a prisoner, but now you're free. Your sentence has been dropped, not just for today, but forever, because this innocent man is going, going to take your cross, give his life, so that you will never have to pay the sentence that you deserved. And when I thought about this for me, y'all, I'm going to be honest. I hate to admit that I cried. I hate it. But I sat there, and I just cried. Like, I didn't just do a cute, wet, like, I didn't just kind of cry. Like, I bawled in the presence of God because that truth hit me so hard. I was the prisoner. I deserved that. 
and then he set me free. And I think I know that we'll never fully grasp what we deserve for our sins. And we won't ever have to because of the grace of God. It was the plan from beginning of time. When God breathed breath into Adam, our sin did not surprise him. He had Barabbas on his mind as he was creating the world. He had you and I in his mind. And when he sent Jesus, it was for Barabbas physically that day. And it was for you and I for all eternity. All who would place their faith in that, that Jesus went and paid your price for you. Would you believe that that is true for you? Would you let that truth truly sink in? I'm Barabbas, and you're Barabbas too. Lord, today, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this room. I thank you for this scripture. I want to praise you for the intentionality of going in the place of Barabbas because that is literally us in this room today, God. We deserved what was coming for us, but you stepped in the way, and you made a way when there was no way, and you took our punishment on the cross when we could never save ourselves, Jesus. So today I pray that you would open up our hearts to see that is true for every single person in this room. And I pray that there would be a heart of worship and praise that comes out of that truth. Today, Lord, we just praise you and we worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you all stand up this morning? God loves you and he cares for you. And even when you cannot see him, even when you don't feel him, he still has a message for you. Listen to the words of this song as he talks to you this morning. I see you, child, though you can't see me. And I know your thoughts before you even think. Oh, every prayer you pray, though I answered all the time. You just didn't hear my reply And I know it's not easy Oh, don't you give up on me Don't you give up on me Cause the darker the night gets The brighter the light hits Don't you give up on me Don't you give up Child, we're just getting started. Ooh, ooh, there is so much more. Ooh, ooh, I'll be your way when there's no way out. And I'll be your strength when your strength comes out. And if you walk into the fire,
In the midst of uncertainty, our faith can struggle. Our walk becomes labored, our heart heavy. There's something about the unknown which seems to weaken us. It drains our patience and blurs our focus. Yet in the middle of everything stands a faithful God. A God who's not swayed by the struggle, who isn't moved by the winds of chaos. A God who remains faithful even when our faith is fragile. It seems more difficult than ever to not worry about tomorrow. Yet that's exactly what God has asked us to do. For when we cast our burdens on Him, the troubles of the moment begin to fade. When we trust the plans He has for us, 
our fear begins to subside. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, our focus becomes consumed by clarity. Yes, we are in the midst of uncertainty, but we can be certain of one thing. God is faithful, and that is more than enough for tomorrow. You guys are with us this morning. I think I got that thing on finally. Things I wish I knew were going to kind of sum up our last month of coming together about things that I wish I knew. And then we're going to launch our next series, uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, you all can see we've been in the middle of craft preparing as we've got a thing of thorns on the ceiling. And we're going to have Jesus' tomb. If you want to know what Jesus' tomb they believe it looked like. You can actually Google that and you'll see, and we're going to try to do as best we can to match that. And then we're going to have uh, some other artwork on this side. It's been fun doing art together. Uh, uh, is, was it flickering on me? It's all right. Let her flicker. Things I wish I knew, the timing of life. You know, I think the timing is everything, don't you guys? Uh, you ever had a friend that, you know, when, when you're telling a joke, timing really is everything. If you don't time off the, if you, if you don't hit the punchline in the right way, well, it's, it's not as funny. <clears throat> Jeff was telling me that his mama uh, used to, he would like to tell her jokes and then ask her to tell him the joke back because he said she'd always mess it up. And he said it was more funny than usually the joke. And maybe you have a friend like that. Um, but uh, I, heard a, I heard one here not too long ago about a lady that she was, um, she was very charismatic. Um, she went to a more um, conservative church one Sunday. It had snowed and her church wasn't open and this church was. And so she came in and she found her way down about the middle of the row. And she sat down and, and uh, the preacher was preaching about Jesus' death on the cross. And she said, glory, hallelujah. Pretty soon this deacon come down the aisle and he got right to her and he said, ma'am, we don't do that here. And she said, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Won't happen again. He said, okay. He went back to the back and the preacher moved on from Jesus' death to Jesus' burial. And she jumped up. She said, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. And here come that old deacon again. He walked right back, marched right back down there. And he said, ma'am, I told you once. I'm telling you twice. I'm not telling you a third time. I'm going to carry you out of here. You do this again. She said, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I won't let it happen again. And what? Well, he moved from Jesus' death to burial to resurrection, and she just had a fit. She got up, and she was dancing, and I mean, she was just going crazy. Hallelujah, glory. Two deacons walked down this time, and he come down there, and that first one, he picked her up. He threw her over his shoulder like a sack of taters. He's carrying her out, and the other one's walking right behind her saying, Boy, I bet you sure feel silly now. And she said, Nope. My Lord Jesus rode into Jerusalem on one of these. I'm riding out on two. Timing is everything, isn't it? You know, sometimes I told you guys a few weeks ago that the Lord's never early and He's never late. He's always right on time. I've heard that said over and over again all my life, but there has been days when I think, Lord, now is a good time for you to show up. Now is the time I need you to intervene. I need you to do something, uh, uh, whether it's financially or in a relationship or, or whatever the case may be, God I think this is the right time. Like, I want to tell him what is the right... You, maybe, maybe I'm by myself or maybe you're with me, but that's what I have often found. If only I knew the exact uh, time or the exact thing that God wanted me to be, to do, it, when he wanted me to go or when he wanted me to stop, things that I wish I knew is the timing of life. We are, as a society, focused on the future. Wouldn't you agree? That oftentimes we focus on the demands and the lusts of our culture instead of the promises of God. If you've got your Bibles, open them up to 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 8 this morning. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Here's what it says. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. 
The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I mean, we've been hearing for years, you know, like decades, like eons, like forever, how the Lord is coming back. And I believe he is. The end is near. It's, the end is right upon us, they say, and People say, well, when is it going to happen? I say, I don't know, but I know that we're one day closer than we were yesterday, and we're a lot more days closer than they were 2,024 years ago when Jesus was nailed to the cross. The end is near, but God is not slow in keeping his promise about his return. As some of us understand slowness, instead, it's because of his patience. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but he wants everybody to come to repentance. He wants everybody to have eternal life. He goes on to say it like this, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. When the end happens, it'll happen like a thief when we least expect it. And the heavens will disappear with a roar and the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought we be? Since the end is going to come and we don't know when it's going to come, How should we live our life not knowing when the end's going to come? He says you ought to live holy and godly lives. That's a tall order. I don't know about you, but I can't. I'm not holy. But Jesus living in me makes me holy. It's not how faithful I've been. It's how faithful he's been. It's not how good I am. It's how good he is. Praise the Lord that when God sees me on the day of judgment, he's not going to just see me. He's going to see his son living in me. You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming. And that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. I'm 48 years old now, and the big idea is I wish that I had learned to trust God's timing. I would add sooner. (laughs) I would add, even though I trusted it once, that I remember I trusted it once and that I should trust it again, right? Like I wish that I had learned to trust God's timing. Let's pray together. Lord, I love you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house And God, how your word gives us direction and builds our faith and and helps us to trust you even more. God, we love you and we thank you for every person that's here. And God, this faith journey we walk with you is a huge thing. So God, I pray that you give us that, that faith the size of a mustard seed this morning that we would just turn our lives completely over to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. So we got some notes to self this, this, this time, it's, uh, this month. It's been like post-it notes. I talked about having post-it notes everywhere. Uh, I sometimes put post-it notes on my dash. Now I use my regular calendar and my phone because it beeps at me and reminds me of things that I need to keep in mind. And the first one on your listening guide this morning that we need to keep in mind is real, realize that we can't see the whole picture. Uh, I wish that we could see the whole picture. I mean, I could see, uh, you know, uh, the end of the story. I know in the end, in Revelation, Jesus wins. I know that he is King of kings and Lord of lords. I know that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord, that there is no one greater than our God. Somebody say amen. Amen. It's true. You guys are awake. Man, you guys are awake this morning. (laughs) Psyching me up. Now, instead, we mostly see a 500 foot view whenever we really want to see a 30,000 foot view. We want to, you know, like you would on your map quest on your phone, you, you know, use your fingers and make it bigger or smaller. And, you know, sometimes I get a little confused with that thing and I, I get all messed up. Anybody else? And I just a frustration because I want to see the whole picture. I want to see exactly What's going on? Jeff's going to come with me. Where are you at, Jeff? Come on up here. We're going to do some arts and crafts. I told you we already started that this week. And so um, we're not really artists, but Mike, the bass player, uh, he is an artist. And so he gave us a few lines to stay within. Um, And so we're going to do a little painting. Um, I purposely have it facing away from you (laughs) because we're not good and we need help. But I, I, uh, that's probably pretty good, bud. (laughs) Him and Christmas. 
And uh, so anyway, Jeff's going to get started on that. He's going he's gonna to work on that while I talk to you a little bit. But we just can't see the whole picture. And I guess if I turn the thing around, you could probably see the whole picture. Um, but we, we can't. You just got to trust us uh, that, that we're doing, I guess, a good job painting. It's kind of like trusting the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says it like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Boy, that's easier said than done. This writer here in Proverbs, I mean, he's got it all figured out. Uh, it it kind of aggravates me because sometimes it just is easier to say than do. Uh, you ever been somebody's friend and they're going through a problem and you say, well, it's easy, just do this. And you're like, it ain't that easy. And that's where I find myself sometimes reading the word of God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Listen, whenever I don't think God showed up on the right time, uh, sometimes I want to help him out. Like if you ain't going to do it, God, I guess I'll do it. And sometimes I get myself out in front of God. And, and sometimes, most of the time, when I do that, I create problems. He says, lean not on your, on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. The fastest way to get somewhere is a straight line, right? But it's going to take some faith. It's really going to take some faith. I already had one hard conversation with a couple this morning and a couple of folks. And I told them, I said, don't blame this on me when you hear this message. Because what they was describing to me is going to take a lot of faith. And maybe you're like them this morning and what you're facing may cause you to have to take a lot of faith. You don't see the big picture. You don't, you don't see everything that's going to happen. You're wanting God to show up and tell you what's next and what you should do and when you should go and when you should stop. That word faith literally means forsaking all. I trust him, F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, I trust him. I'm going to take my hand of faith and I'm going to put it in God's hand of faith and he's going to have to guide me through this dark and windy and crazy world. And i got to trust that he knows what's better for me because so often I don't know what's good for me. Reminds me not too long ago I was gone on a trip and I realized that we were changing things in the house because there was things listed on Facebook to sell. We were getting new, new curtains apparently. And sometimes when you're getting new curtains, that means that other things in the house got moved around and rearranged. And I'm just hoping when I show up late at night and the lights are off, that, that, that I don't stub my toe, right? Like that I don't run into something that, that wasn't there before whenever I left. You see, this is the, the same picture we have with the Lord of putting our hand in His hand. I put my hand in His hand and I, I walk with Him. He, the Bible says that the way we do this is we turn away from our sin and ourself, our, our way, and we turn and we trust God His way. Turning away, the Bible says it like this in, in, in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, and then again in verse 5, it says, unless you repent, you too will perish. Unless you turn from your sin and yourself, you will perish. It's a dead end road. It it's leads to death. But we turn and we trust Christ and him alone. This is how we do it. The Bible says in, in John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by him. He is the way. Like his way is better than my way. His thoughts are better than my thoughts. It goes on to tell us you know, that the, the righteous, they, they, they walk by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us the definition of faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I, I'm sure I hope. My hope is in God. My hope is in Jesus my hope is in eternal life. My hope is in abundant life. I'm certain 
That if he said he's going to go and prepare a place for me, that he'll come again and receive me to, my, to himself. That where I am, he will be also, or that where he is, I will be also. I believe that this is what he's got for me, that this is faith. And then in Hebrews eleven six, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. No wonder I can't see the big picture. It's not because he's punishing me. It's because he's wanting to guide me. He wants to walk in relationship with me. This is not a one-way street. He wants us to do this together. And when I realize that I can't see the whole picture, Isaiah 55, 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I have a finite mind. He is an infinite God. And his ways are greater than my ways. How you doing over there? He ain't done yet? Not yet. How many minutes I got? Uh, like 30 seconds ago, we passed it. Oh. Hey, you're looking good. Scoot over a little bit. Let me see this thing. Um, yeah, this is backwards right here, I think. You know? Well, it looks pretty good, though, anyways. Yeah, go ahead and outline... Good job. Well, that's the unique thing about it, isn't it? Let me ask you this. What if God, what if the God you're waiting on, what if he was waiting on you? Like he wants to give you the big picture. So my question is, have you trusted God with your life? Not just some of it, not just a part of it, but have you trusted God with all of your life? That you would say, God, I surrender it all. I know that I don't have the answer. I know I don't know what this looks like. But God, you got me walking down this road. And God, you didn't bring me this far just to say, good luck. I hope you make it. No, God's got you. He says he'll never leave you nor will he forsake you. So have you trusted God with your life? And if you haven't, you can right now. By faith. See, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Maybe you would pray something like this. I had a, a man by the name of Tristan this morning, first service, prayed this prayer and gave his life to Christ. Maybe you would too. And trust him solely with your whole life and his timing. Lord, I love you. You would say something like this. God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm turning away from that, my, my ways. And Lord, I want to trust you. Jesus, be my Lord and be my Savior. I surrender my life to you. I raise the white flag in my life and say, here it is, it's yours. God, from this day forward, I, I want to live for you the way that your word tells me to. God, thank you for giving me forgiveness of my sins and eternal life. God, I promise to always follow you, and it's in your name I pray. Amen. Maybe you just prayed and said, God, I'm giving it over to you. I'm surrendering to you. Here's the second thing. I think he wants us to enjoy the journey and don't rush through it. Enjoy the journey. Hey, do you, get the, you got her. Yeah, turn that thing around. Let's show them. The big picture. You did pretty good there, Jeff. The bigger picture. Amen. The bigger picture. It's, it makes a difference whenever you can see the whole thing and realize what it's really about. I was telling them first service, you know, we... Wait, I guess you guys probably... Ta-da! Can everybody see it? How's that? Did you all see it? Ta-da! Good job, Jeff. Yeah. Not bad for Arts and Crafts Day, buddy. You know, I, I, I was thinking about, though, as, as far as 
being able to see. We, we make things about a lot of other things, don't we? We, we, there's a guy named, uh, what's his name, Chan, um, uh, not Jackie, Francis Chan. He's a preacher, he's on TV, and he was talking about how he told his daughter, he said, honey, go clean your room. She said, okay. A little bit later, she came back, and he said, honey, did you clean your room? She says, nope, but I memorized what you said. You said, honey, go clean your room. She said, I called a bunch of my friends. We got together. We had a little study in the Greek about what it meant when your dad tells you to go clean your room. And you know, it was a pretty good study. And, and, and so often, I think that we get so busy doing the religious things that, you know, like studying what God's Word said, like, like memorizing what God's Word said, but actually doing what God's Word said. And that's living it. What a reminder of seeing the big picture. The journey. Enjoy the journey. Don't rush through it. 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9 says this. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. He's not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. We've got to trust his timing and enjoy the journey. I love this. A day is like a thousand years. I just want to spend every day with you. Uh, 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 what was the old song? Like, uh, I, I just want to be in his courts. Like, uh, I, I want to spend that time with him. Like, it's a, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Enjoy the journey that is walking with the Lord. Don't rush it to accomplish the next task. Don't rush it to fix something or someone else that only the work of God can change. We've got to trust God's timing. Y'all remember the song by Alabama? I'm in a hurry to get things done. Oh, I rush and rush until life's no fun. All I really got to do. Dude, y'all remember? What a good old song. We, we get so busy, so hurrying that, that sometimes we can miss what it is God wants to do in our life. Proverbs 20, 24 says, A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? I mean, God is in charge in our life. I, Angie and I, we used to, when the kids were little, we'd go out to eat. We have three of them little terrors. You know, we, we, we found out pretty quick that as we would go to different restaurants, you know, restaurants have areas that they don't tell people about that that's where the kiddos go. Like Olive Garden, if you ever take little kids to Olive Garden, you grandparents, parents, you know that they set you on the side in the back wing. But really, it's probably a good thing because ours, man, they might throw food 50 feet. And like, I don't want to be buying somebody else's shirt, you know, with me. I mean, they, it was crazy. And sometimes they were really loud and obnoxious, and wouldn't listen, and wouldn't eat their food, and threw a fit, and it was, and somebody would walk up to me and have the audacity to look right at me and say, enjoy this time, young man. You won't get these days back. And I'm like, you want to take them home? We'll send them with you. I'm not joking. And I look back now and I'm like, yeah, I get it. I hurried that day on when I shouldn't have hurried that day on. But does that ever stop? Because then we get to the place where we're like my age and you're thinking about retirement. And then some of my buddies the other day that were preachers, they said, you know, pastor, preachers don't retire. I'm like, really? I might have chose the wrong profession. We, we talk about the things that we want to do and the places we want to go. Max Licato says, uh, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 says it this way. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose 
that prevails. I heard it said a long time ago that if we don't plan, we plan to fail. You heard it too, but here's what he says about that in James 4, 13. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will do go to, to this city or to that, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what, tomorrow, what will happen tomorrow, he says. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then it vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. There's a warning. Don't miss what God has for you on the way of hurrying to complete the next thing. It's God's timing. God's way is always better than my way. His timing is always better than my timing. Here's the third thing tonight or today. Fight the good fight regardless of the outcome. Regardless how you think it should turn out, regardless of what actually happens, your responsibility, my responsibility is to be obedient and be faithful. He desires obedience more than sacrifice. That's what the scripture says. Second Peter 3.11 says, Since everything will be destroyed in this way, remember the question, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and you speed its coming. We got to see the bigger picture. He's coming. That's Look at the person next to you and say, he's coming. Jesus is coming back. We know that it's going to happen. We, we know that he said it and it will happen. All the other things that Jesus said he has done, he will do this and even more. But the reality is he is coming back. And I don't know when and you don't know when. So I got to be about the master's business. Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20 tells us to go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. To baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to teach them to obey everything that he's commanded us. And surely he is with us always even to the end of the age. This is where conduct and conviction meet head on. You know, people matter more than stuff. This is true. I mean, that's why I want to tell my friends about Jesus. That's why I want to tell my family about Jesus, about his love, his forgiveness, and repentance. Because if we repent, he he gives us that forgiveness, and we get eternal life. I was telling somebody this week, you know, the Bible says that God wrote on the heart of every man eternity. No wonder we want to live forever. God placed it in our heart to want to live forever. So when he begins to speak about eternity, we begin to listen because we don't want to die. Sometimes we think that people are the problem when in fact people are the mission. The Bible said he came... To seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus' whole mission was to come and to live a perfect life and to die a sinner's death and to raise on the third day so that we could have forgiveness and eternal life. So he says, what type of people ought we be? What should we do? I mean, I want to be patient. I want to wait on the right timing. I want to do what God's called me to do. I think in the next scripture here, we can see three conducts that we need to be intentional about. Keeping calm, evangelizing, and fulfilling the ministry that God has given you. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8 says it like this. Paul is speaking to Timothy as a spiritual father to a son. He says this, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead... And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, he says, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Be prepared all the time. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. This just hit me. I didn't think about this before. Rebuke and correct and encourage. And then it has a dash in my scripture and it says with great patience. Because <laughs> some people aren't fast learners. That would be me. I don't usually get it the first time, so I'm glad he's got patience. I'm glad my wife has patience. 
as she has to sometimes correct and rebuke and encourage me with careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their ears want to hear. Like when we don't get the response we want, we'll go ask somebody else until they tell us what we want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Verse 5, this is his instruction to us, but you keep your head in all situations. Keep calm. (laughs) It's going to get crazy out here, amen? Our world seems not so. Don't even get me started. But keep your head in all situations. Endure hardships. It's going to be hard. Do the work of an evangelist, he says. In other words, go and tell everybody about Jesus and his love for them. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. What's your ministry look like? like my, our, our ministry together is to, to know God and make God known, but each one of us have different tasks involved in the ministry, and we're supposed to discharge all of those, not holding anything back, but to do those things which God has called us. I had a friend named Eddie that used to be at a church that I was at up in Odessa, and Eddie had um, rheumatoid arthritis really bad, and his fingers were all crooked now, and he couldn't hardly close his hands, but he would go to the truck stop each about every two weeks, and he would uh, share the gospel there, do a little serv- uh, service for the truck drivers. But when he was home, Eddie had a lot of candy. And one of his great things that he would do is he would give us candy, and he, would, he was an encourager, and he would say, Pastor, you need some candy. I'm like, I was a youth pastor at the time. I'm like, yeah, I need some candy. And like he would put more candy in my hand than I could get in my, my pocket. So I'd eat it. He was an encourager. He was discharging the duties of his ministry. Sometimes we get hurt. Church hurt, people hurt. And we're like, I'm not going to let anybody do that to me again. And, and so we put up a wall and, and sometimes we step outside of ministry. And maybe you're here and today's one of your first days back in any church because you got church hurt. But God's not done with you. And you're going to have to let down the wall and you're going to have to accept his timing and, and, and walk beside him with your hand of faith in his hand of faith saying, God, I know you want to use me. Paul says this another way here in Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as if you were working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. The next step, my to-do list, is to be okay with not knowing or being able to see the big picture. Be okay with trusting God's timing. That's called faith. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. You know what it says? I love this. In Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't just be a hearer of his word. James says, be a doer of it as well. Dad, Dad, I learned. I memorized what you said. Honey, go clean your room. Dad, I did a lot of Bible studies about what you said. I learned a whole lot. Keep fighting the good fight. Enjoy the journey called life. Don't rush it. Even if you cannot see the whole picture, trust Him, right? Trust Him. Lord, I love you. God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for reminding us the picture is you. You're why we do what we do. God, we're so grateful for how you saved our soul. And God, how you promised to save everyone. God, I pray that you'd help us to show them your love. Give us great patience. Give us endurance. 
Let our conviction meet up with our conduct right here and now. God, we know we don't have the answers. We may not ever have all the answers. But God, you do. So God, we say we don't know how. Sometimes we don't know why. But we trust you. And it's your name we pray. Amen. You stand with me right now if you would. If you prayed that prayer earlier to ask Jesus in your heart, you come. Maybe you need to rededicate your life today. You come. Say, God, I've walked away, but I want to come back. He says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. You come. Maybe you're dealing with something. You're saying, God, the timing is today. I need you today because my patience is worth thin. You come. We want to pray with you that God would strengthen you and we could be an encouragement to you. You come right now. Grander earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice The seas that are shaken and stirred be calmed and broken for my regard. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well. from me to not believe even when my eyes can't see and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea we sing when we give it to God. It is well. When we finally release it and say, here you go. With my soul, it is well. With my soul, it guys can be seated. You guys are going to come forward um, for the offering. I'm going to ask John to pray for him. Father God, thank you for this time that we've had together. Thank you for the message that was delivered today. Uh, I just ask that those people that are invited for next weekend service that they uh, they find it in their in their time and their hearts to attend 
partake in the spirit. We ask that you bless this offering. Allow us to use it in the community in your name. It's in your son's mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. I hope you guys have been inviting people to church next week to celebrate our risen Savior. Um, it's going to be a wonderful, chaotic, packed house. We're expecting that next week. And um, I want to ask that maybe you volunteer on a hospitality team for Easter weekend. If you go on the app and you, you just plug in there on the app, come in next week and we're going to have it all organized. Darla's working on it, so I know it's going to be organized. And um, we'll have it organized and we'll, we'll have a place for you to serve if you want to serve. Um, and if you haven't invited somebody, we want to make it easy. We've got plenty of these cards. If you've, if you've run out, we've got more. Just keep passing them out and um, inviting people to our, our service next week. I wanted to say that Children's Camp, um, today is the last day to get signed up with the form and the deposit. So um, um, Hillary can help you with that. It's on the app. Um, the rest of it in there you could, guys can read. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for um, your word, Lord. Thank you for um, our Savior, Lord. As we go through this next week, this holy week, let us concentrate on you, Lord, and that we can have a renewed relationship with you, understanding that you are our Savior, that we spend this week looking to your crucifixion, but we celebrate in your resurrection, Lord. Father God, just put somebody in our path this week that doesn't know you, that we can express your love to them. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen.